Um, yeah. So our mission in Parsweet is uh, basically from Rubiki text to uh, HTML and RDFA and do the reverse conversion too. Um, why do we want to do that? Um, big reason is that HTML is much easier to work with. It's editable using uh, the visual editor. Uh, there's semantic information in RDFA that can be um, used to do content analysis. Um, and it's much easier to, to transform it into some other format so, uh, using static tools. And the difficulty though, um, because we don't, can't go to HTML all the way in one step, we have a lot of um, content already, is that we have to support both wiki text and HTML editing for a long time. So we have to have a bi-directional conversion. And this is basically what we currently have been working on and pretty much how we how far we got. And the next steps are, and this conversion is already pretty good, but it's not yet 100%, it's not yet a quality very good. Throw away the wiki tags and replace it with HTML. But um, we will continue working on it and are optimistic that we will get good enough in a year or so to uh, eventually store HTML and have that also be the master copy eventually. So the next steps are to have add HTML storage to MediaWiki core. And um, then once we use HTML storage as the master um, data format and, and MediaWiki, we can still continue to support wiki text editing with Parsi by just converting to wiki text on demand and then converting back to HTML. So basically reversing the process. Oops. So the difficulties um, we face with wiki text are stuff like uh, multi-part templates. We, it's because it's a purely textual templating mechanism. Um, table, templates can just be made a table star tag, then some table content and a table add tag. So in this case it's uh, the player list of some football club, I think this is the British national team, um, is templated as a start template, and for each player there's one template that produces the row, and then eventually there's an add tag. And we have to uh, want to encapsulate the whole thing as one, te one template affected area, and have to understand this. And we also have to support uh, expanding this and producing this table to start with, so we can't just rely on each thing producing some kind of sub uh, sub sub tree in the DOM. That's one challenge, and another is context sensitivity and and wiki text. Um, simple examples such as overlapping tags that have to be resolved in a, in a sensible manner. For that, you need to have access to a random access stack, so you can look at nesting levels and uh, to a minimal fix-up. That's already context-sensitive and uh, core balancing. Very famous, uh, these codes are used for italic and bold, and uh, if they don't match up at the end, so bold is three codes and uh, italic is two, if they don't match up as pairs at the end of a line, they are, that's a heuristic, a very complex heuristic that tries to determine if um, one of these codes can be converted back to pure text. And uh, that's an arbitrary heuristic that was that has just grown over time, and so it's, it requires access to stacks to and this concept context sensitive. And so that also means that we can't just do it with a grammar. So we can't use context free grammar to pass this. Yeah, and there's of course lots of random bugs and uh, irregularities that just stem from the way the PHP parser was written. It's just uh, there's a function do block levels that has a lot of uh, regular expressions and heuristics like disabling paragraph wrapping if there's some block level attack in that line and they're all based on reg apps, look ahead and so on. And we have to mirror that because otherwise we would change the semantics of existing content. Yeah, then we have need to round chip the whole thing because we want to go back to wiki text and wiki text editing. Um, comparison between two wiki text versions is based on pure text diff. That means to support current editing practice and these texts have to be then these texts have to be very clean. We can't just have random divs in, in places that the user has not actually touched. Um, 
because then people would not find, be able to find the actual modifications. So um, that, that also means we have to distinguish something like uh, all these different forms of links, like templated versions and uh, pipe versions and, and so on. We have to map them. They all map to the same HTML, but we have to map them back to the original wiki text, even though they are just different ways to do that. So we have to recall all this information to be able to go back. And performance needs to be good enough to support all of Wikipedia. So uh, that's quite difficult to do because we go to have to go to much greater lengths to uh, do all this processing. This is how Parse looks uh, on the architecture. Basically, we start this is with text that is then on the way to uh, HTML that is fed through the tokenizer which is based on a pack grammar. And um, the pack grammar builds a, a tree internally, but we flatten it immediately to tokens. So we get a token stream. Initially, that's a mix of uh, HTML-like tokens, like star tag, and tag, text, and so on, and some custom ones, like uh, bullets for wiki text lists, or uh, quotes for these, these italic bolts, quotes. And um, these token stream transformers then uh, look at these non-HTML tokens and transform them and massage them in a very asynchronous manner manners until all the tokens are eventually pure HTML tokens. Um, that also means that at that point something like templates is expanded. Uh, it's done with uh, a lot of parallel API requests, so that's that's a very dynamic and asynchronous space, even, even the tokenization is um, stepwise, so we tokenize block by block, then feed them in a token stream, kick off the request to the API, uh, continue tokenization, then process some of the responses that come back, and it's all fed in an asynchronous pipeline. So it can be 200 requests or so in parallel to the API. Um, eventually, all these tokens are basically HTML tokens which are then fed to an HTML5 tree builder, which is the library we have hacked a little bit, but it's basically a standard HTML5 tree building algorithm. And we get a DOM out of that, the DOM is further massaged, we, we do some analysis on it to extract information, and then have this HTML. And on the way back, we have a serializer um, that uses all the information we've generated uh, and this private round of information to produce the original. This is exposed using HTTP, so the visual editor and uh, browsers and, and so on can use it. Um, this is basically what I just said. Um, yeah, we do a lot of detection on the DOM about um, the ranges that were with these multi part templates are um, merged to one big template block so that you can. Um, that you can't answer, insert the cursor between the start template and the end template. And that you can, we, we provide all the information about the templates that were involved in the generation of some content, so, which can be many. Um, for the way back, we get this information called DSR. Um, that is very important, it's a DOM source range. Um, that means for each subtree in the DOM, we have the start and end offset and the start tag and end tag width. So based on that, we can do a, a DOM div on the of the original HTML and the modified HTML when we get it back, and then uh, use the original wiki tags based on this DSR uh, for bits that were not modified. And that means avoids um, creating small diffs on things like code style, semi quotes, where there's double quotes, where there's no quotes or uh, purely syntactic white space diffs. And there's a lot more around of information in that capacity about uh, typed links, link trails, and all these variants. So that, that's just also preserved. But it's basically, if, if there's nothing modified, you just use the wholesale of the text. And if it's modified, then we still try to remember a lot of the stuff in the other Um, 
complexity of WikiTeaks means that we uh, have to do a lot of testing, armchair testing is used to uh, identify issues, and we have uh, used it a lot to, uh, add, to identify uh, missing test cases like puzzle tests. And actually, we have 400 puzzle tests roughly, now we have 100, 1,100 roughly, and we also call them in, in different directions so we can do it. For wiki text to HTML, HTML to wiki text, wiki text to wiki text, uh, and then simulate edits even with for selective sterilization. So for a total of the roughly 15,000 tests that I run automatically on each commit before it's merged. And this is the Ranger testing as uh, a distributed framework. We have a lot of machines that will be very slow, and a central coordinator that uh, we update every two days or so, we have run up each important commit and before each, each deploy. And that is uh, it's a very good reinsurance and it's run on 16 different languages, so it's also covering language issues. Uh, performance, we have 24 machines um, that are holding up very well. They're usually the load is pretty lowish, 10%. Or even lower. Right now it's a little bit higher because we fixed some template processing, template updates. Um, but uh, the, for the user, the important thing is that they usually get cached pages. So we render after each edit, we re render the page and prompt it cached that way. And uh, so when you click edit on a piece of visual editor, you usually get just a capture reply. And um, yeah, so performance from the user perspective is very quick, and serialization is also relatively quick. So, um, yeah, so the biggest issue is more that we uh, hammer the our own API, especially for template updates. This is a spike. This is the number of jobs that are included for Postgres uh, updates, and there are these spikes. That means that a lot of jobs were included uh, for after editing a template that was used in all of pages. After that, all these pages need to be updated. Uh, yes. And um, the problem is that this is very expensive on the API because we, in that case, we have to re-render these, these templates, and that's all API requests. So we have to throttle that to avoid killing the API. <laughs> so, which is easy to do with if you're highly concurrent. So you can test it already uh, with our Puny Labs instance, uh, cwmathlabs.org. But uh, we also have this 24 machine cluster that I mentioned, and that is not yet publicly exposed, but we will have that very soon, hopefully next week. So, um, <coughs> next steps are continuing tweaking and bug fixing, uh, so that we get to this point where we can actually be confident that the HTML reproduces really the exact uh, same thing. Uh, we want to start <coughs> pushing this HTML to media wiki core. So eventually we want to have use HTML as the, the storage format. And um, we, we have to build the infrastructure to store HTML first. We want to replace our caching, simple caching setup with extra storage. And um, we ought to do HTML diffing. Because if you have HTML storage, you certainly want to have a way to see the difference. And it should not be textual because that's not very easy to read. For somebody who has uh, only seen the visual representation. And um, eventually, we want to also use parser HTML for page views. That means also for Wikipedia at some point. And HTML based templating would be great because we currently have all these, these spring based uh, templates that can just be produced on danced output and they're very hard to edit. And we would like to investigate if something that is better. And so basically HTML and media wiki. That's it for me. Mm. I have one. Um, I know Parsoid has quite a bit of extra syntactic markup. So will that cause how much is the increase in size for Wikipedia pages if it was used as the main uh, presentation? If Parsoid HTML is used as a regular yeah. HTML. Right now, our round trip information uh, in this data password attribute is still in line. But we want to, want, along with the storage uh, work that we're doing, we want to extract it out 
by adding the capability to store multiple parts in a revision. Right. And um, at that point, I think the overhead will be the compressed overhead will be something like ten to twenty percent. Right. So that's a lot of we we haven't really worked on optimizing it. So. Uh, I think that's that's a lot of country. Right now, it's all for readability, optimized for readability, where we can always have for, have very short names and mm. optimized for com for compression. Mm. So, my favorite example of this is um, Subu, another engineering parser team, recently added support for having ref tags inside of a references tag. Yes. And the particular way to expose the details, like triple encodes the data, and so every quote gets turned like five or six characters. And so, it, like, when he did that, like, the size of the Barack Obama output increased from, like, 500k to 800k or something. Uh, yeah. He yes. was like, here are your references. By the way, it also doubled the size of the output. <laughs> yeah, so, it would be good to remove all the data password stuff because it's JSON information and it has yeah. a lot of codes in it. And yes. Then you yeah, actually code them very efficiently by using single quotes around double quote or JSON. But if you have one you fish, you know, and then the data parser that again, it's... Yeah, it just goes, yeah. Are you saying you can move it out to the, out to the actual computer? Yeah, that process it can be moved completely out. We, we just want to leave in a um, unique ID mm -hmm. on nodes that lets us associate the extra information with each node. But uh, it can be stored in different parts of the revision. Mm -hmm. And could also be exposed as an API if people are interested. Like 5e store. Do you have some document or sample about the, the, the read-only API you talk about? Um, the timeline? Or like uh, the how samples, uh, how to use the API? Oh, it's just an HTTP request. Uh -huh. It will be very similar to what you already have, except that it's public and uses the cache. Uh -huh. So it will probably be something slash and the key slash page name. Or maybe question okay. mark old ID equals... Okay. Is there relatively three. complete documentation about the HTTP API? Or is it just implementation so far? Well, right now it's only uh, an internal API, so but the public API will certainly have to implement it. Mm -hmm. okay. So you can, it will look very similar to the Parsuit API, so it's mostly a matter of changing the URL to, to the mini wiki version. Sure. And are there any other problems with, the, with, the, with that change? I mean, to so use Parsley HTML versus regular HTML, or is it functionally pretty much identical? Yeah, it is pretty, pretty much identical. The main difference is that uh, Parsley HTML has more information right. in it in attributes. That's the RDFA bit, and that's uh, that Parsley. And um, for templates, we also, and some other constructs, we have data and W, right. which is a public JSON attribute that has information about parameters. So basically, it'll be just like regular HTML, except that it notes where things are expanded, have been expanded out, all sort of. It, it is regular HTML. It's just uh, we I mean, we have additional information that is it's also HTML, but it's, I, uh, yeah. it helps you identify blocks that were dynamically uh, generated and so on. So should be approximately identical to the PHP output. Yeah. yeah. I like that. I, I didn't expect there to be much problems, but you know. Well, like you know, there, there's bugs here and there. Like I told you about large thumb this morning. Yeah. <laughs> there, there are a few things that, like, I think Gabriel said this in the beginning, like, uh, yeah. uh, like it's not 100 percent there yet. I presume by the time you switch over, they'll all be yeah, 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 fast. Yeah. So. Yeah. yeah, large thumb is probably something we might fix with Bolt. So. Oh, just like. Don't support it and fix all the yeah, yeah, it's not yeah. insane to support it. So it's it is kind of an insane feature, yeah. <laughs> and that's limit we know the users we can just iterate over them and fix them. Yeah. It's it's not doesn't have to cause a round trip dip, dip either, it's just a rendering issue really. And so yeah. If people see an old revision and it looks a little bit odd, it's not the end of the world. Mm -hmm. Alright, um and then advance to the other talk. Um, the infrastructure. Um, 
this HTTP API is interesting better than this format, or if you want to start using it. Um, we have a dump spec at this URL that uh, details how each individual special element that is not just plain HTML is marked up using an IFA. So um, this is a simple wiki link. It has a rel mw wiki link that marks it up, and um, that's it when all the details between these different uh, forms of wiki links are just given. So as a user, you don't have to be concerned with syntactic detail. You just see that's the wiki link. That's a target. It's normalized. Uh, this, this is um, an absolute path, basically, but it's encoded as a relative. So we go out to the root of the wiki, and then it's the full path. But it's relative to this page. So if you're on a sub-page, <coughs> a page that contains slashes, it has dot dot slash dot yes. dot slash until you get the root and then the full path. Um, yeah, there's much more point strikes like um, thumbnails and, and so on. Just look it up. It's pretty straightforward. You can uh, match these using CSS or jQuery or any tool you like, XPath, and um, extract content that way. Um, you can play with it right now using your labs instance. Um, public API will be added. Um, it's basically through API.php and we'll be just get HTML or something and then you have the same pattern. And um, we will also add a HTML saving at some point before we start by just loading, exposing only HTML, but then there will also be uh, saving and expansion. So if you, uh, for the visual editor in particular, when they add a new template, right now they use a workaround that is more accurately to uh, get at the HTML to provide render the preview. And we will provide a way to send the password HTML and get back an expanded version of this HTML. So the templates are fully rendered. The hack is extremely sad and it involves calling the PHP parser. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> so, what you can already hammer this, uh, the first user of this is uh, Kivix. They have uh, two days ago hammered it for Wiki Voyage and converted all of uh, the English Wiki Voyage to offline. To an offline format. Um, this is how it looks. Um, you can download it now if you can use it on your phone. Um, the, the code they used is pretty simple. Um, let's see. So this is the code they use. They just download. It's not very polished code. They just download. Uh, download the HTML. What I do, save articles, that's downloading each article and saves it and massages it a little bit. So there's some DOM processing here, it get, gets elements and replaces them with something else in the way that I want to massage it for their own display purposes. Mm -hmm. But because it's on the DOM, it's relatively simple. Mm -hmm. so, uh, it's, yeah, there lines and that's all that's needed to convert out of the keyboard to the format. So it makes it very easy to access our HTML. Yeah, that's about it right now. Uh, we don't have a safe API yet, but um, yeah, once we have that, there will be more questions, of course, but uh, we can discuss it online. So we are on RC all the time, and all that information is available on our website too.